Let's say that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Can you join me? Can you say that also? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Turn and look at somebody and say that like you really mean it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. The good times, the bad times. I will bless the Lord at all times. When the sun goes down to the rising of the same, I will bless the Lord at all times. When there's friction all about me and danger surround me, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Whether my body feels good or bad, I will bless the Lord at all times. Whether my cupboard is overflowing or bare, whether my pockets are overflowing or empty, I will bless the Lord at all times. Whether there's turmoil in my house, hell in my life, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. We're speaking that to some entity tonight that just believe we just won't bless the Lord. Throw whatever you want, Mr. Satan, but we're going to bless the Lord at all times. When the doctor pronounced I can't, can't live and going to die, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Let's go on and praise him. Go on and praise him. Go on and praise him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Amen. Shout unto the Lord. Sing unto him a new song. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Anybody know that the Lord is good? In fact, he's good all the time. He doesn't, he doesn't wait for me to be good. He's good no matter what I'm doing. And no one, I will bless the Lord at all the... Come, come on, come on, tell somebody, I love you with Jesus' joy. I love you with Jesus' joy. I'm so glad to see you, my brother and my sister. I'm going to love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Somebody say amen in here. Amen, amen. Let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, eternal God, our Father, our Maker, our Creator, our Kinsman, Redeemer, our everything. Lord, we personalize it tonight. My Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father of all who call on that great name, we thank you for acceptance in the Son. Thank you, God, for finding us where we were. Yes. Reach down by your Holy Spirit and shake the dust off of us. Shake the grime out of us and remind us that nothing can separate us from our sonship. Put a new robe on our back. Put, put new shoes on our feet. Yes. Yes. Serve a banquet table for us. Yes. And God, we come to celebrate you because you are good. You are a great father. Yes. You are not an absentee father. You are, a, you are a father who loves his children. But you are a provider who cares for his children. You are a father that, that welcomes your children in your presence. God, we want to bless you tonight. That as we come call and come into your presence, that you will welcome us with joy. God, we thank you. I have my own children. And when they come to me, it's a sweet joy, and I know the joy must be the same as you. God, we want to see the smile upon your face. We want to see the joy upon you as your children come to just give you glory. Not asking for anything, but thanking you that you've already provided everything. God, we praise you. God, we're excited about you. God, we thank you for a newfound faith. We thank you for a new determination. We thank you, God, for assignments. We thank you for our brothers and our sisters. We thank you for being in the family of God. God, you're worthy, you're merciful. God, we praise you now. Move within this house, if you will, God. Make us one as Father, Son, His Holy Spirit is one. When one hurts, we all hurt. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. 
Whoever came with whatever malady tonight, God, let your presence remove it right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the sweet name of Jesus, in the sweet name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. And the word says, as many that are led by the Holy Spirit, he given them the power to say, Abba, Father. Somebody, he is our Abba, Father. Abba, Abba means yes, Lord. Yes, Father, I will do it. Abba, somebody say Abba, Father. Abba, it's not just Daddy, but it just simply means, Daddy, Father, I will do whatever you assign my hand to do. Abba, Father, send me. God bless you. Come on, Terrence. Let's keep on praising the Lord here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and bless him in this place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. For we're excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. On this last night, amen, of this man, man Up conference, amen, we come to just give God glory and we come to give him honor because truly he is worthy to be praised. How many know he's worthy to be praised? Amen. How many know that he's kept you all day long? Amen. Amen. He kept you back from hurt, harm, and danger. Amen. And we thank him for that on tonight. Amen. Because we come to bless him at all times and his praise shall continually be in our mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're just excited about what the Lord is doing in this place and in this hour. And I'm just telling you, I'm just excited about what God is just doing through this movement to see men and to see brothers come together in unity. Amen. Amen. For it's, it's power in unity. Amen. Amen. That we set aside our agenda, we set aside our, our, our religion, we set aside our race, but for one purpose on tonight, that's to give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for our musicians. Amen. They kind of got hemmed up coming from Hampton, but nevertheless, God is still worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. And we bless him in this place. The song says, I just want to thank you forever and ever. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Y'all got to be my choir. Just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings, blessings and glory and honor, they all. You got it. Just wanna thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Got some backup. Oh, blessing, blessing, and glory.
gonna take it up. Oh, I just wanna thank you. Blessings and glory and honor and honor they all they all they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being a good God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. We want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making a way out of no way, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you just want to thank him. Come on, if you just want to thank him, I dare you to make some noise in this place. Come on, if you just want to thank him for being a good God. Come on, you just want to thank him. Come on, he's worthy to be thanked. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Song says, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Hallelujah. among us let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of our King rise among us let it rise come on help me say let the glory let the glory of the let it rise rise come on we need your glory let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises let the praises of the You say, oh, 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 let it rise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You say, oh, 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 come on, you sound real good. Oh, let it rise. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let the power. Let the power of the Lord, let it rise. rise among we need your power. Let the power of the Lord, let it rise. Let rise among let us. The praises. Let the praises of the Come on, let it rise. Let rise among us. us. Let it rise. Come on, let the power of the Lord, let the Lord, let it rise. Rise among us. We need us. your power. Yes. 
shout in this place that the shout of the Lord. Let it rise. rise. We need to shout. wipe us out. Take us over, oh God. Consume us with your glory. Consume us with your power. Let us forget about our circumstance. Let us forget about our situation. Let us forget about the doctor's report. Let us forget about our bank account. But God, we want your glory to fall in this place. We want your glory to reign in this place. Let your Shekinah glory fall in this house, oh God. Fills this room. Woo, high God, yes, sir. Yeah. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume. Ooh. His awesome presence. Woo. Fill this room. Yeah. This Say is. this is holy ground. How many believe you're standing on holy ground? You're standing on holy ground. This is, this is, this is holy ground. So come, so come, and bow, oh God, we bow down. So come. 
come, so come, so come, so come, so come, and bow. Ooh, we want you to bow down. We want you to bow down. Bow down. See, this is holy ground that we're standing on. This place is saturated with His presence. Come on, help me say this is this is holy ground. Yes, it is. Holy ground, yes it is, yes it is, yes it is. This is holy ground. Somebody, somebody, somebody say, so come, so come, so come, so come, so come. And bow. You can bow down, you can bow down before the King of Kings. Bow down. So come, so come, so come, so come, so come and bow. We want you to bow down. Bow down. He said, consuming fire. Yeah. Consuming. Your awesome presence, His awesome, His awesome presence, presence. it filled this room and filled this room. Consuming fire is his holy ground. This right here is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Now we know, we know, we said on last night we normally do altar calls at the end. But if you just feel like you just need to come and fall down at the altar on holy ground and you just need to pour out to him, you can do so at any time. This is non-traditional, non-traditional. It's non-traditional. We just come for a move of God on tonight. We need him to move. We need his consuming fire to burn away some stuff in us. We need his consuming fire to to burn away some stuff in us. Some stuff that we've been holding on to. Some stuff that we've been harboring. Some stuff that we put in the closet. And we said, God, I want to let go, but if I let go of it, it's really going to expose who I really am. So God, I just want to hold on to it. The scripture says we're supposed to cast our cares upon him. How many fishermen I got in the room? When you take the when you take the reel, you cast it. But one thing about when you cast it, you have every intentions on pulling it back in because you're hoping you catch something. That's what some of us have done. We've cast that thing away. And when I back, when people turn their back, we find ourselves reeling that thing right back in because it was comfortable to us. We found ourselves comfortable in the place that we was in. And if we know that if we had really let it go, Basil, people would have really knew who we really were. But God says on tonight, I want you to cast it. And once you cast it, you cut the line. Because when you cut the line, you know that there's no, that there's no hope in you bringing it back to you. He says, I want you to cast it as far as you can. He says, and when you cast it, cut the line. 
Because when you're real, there's nothing that's going to come back in because he says, I want it. I want to take it from you. I want to make you better. I want to make you whole. I want to free you from that stuff that you've been casting and you've just been bringing back to, to the house. This is holy ground tonight. This is holy ground. And one thing about fire, fire burns. I was talking to Pastor today and I was talking to Pastor Anthony. And he's a firefighter. And one thing, John, a firefighter is designed to do, they're designed to put out fire. But God says, I want to set a fire in you that water won't even put out. He said, I want to set a fire in you that your friends won't even put out. He says, I want to fire you like never before. He says, I want to use you like never before. In order, as we said on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, in order for us to be a man and to man up, we got to have sonship. We got to know who our daddy is. And we got to know what our daddy requires from us. I used as an example the other night that I don't have parents here. They're in Georgia. But the Lord placed the pierces in my life and I use an example that I call him Pops. And when I call him Pops, Anthony, that gave me access to stuff that he got on Moonlight Road. But Keith, if we don't know who our daddy is, we don't have access to the stuff. But by me knowing who he is, I qualify for stuff at his house that you don't even qualify for. But one thing about when we know who our daddy is, we qualify for stuff that other people don't qualify for. Come on, somebody. You just missed it. He says, you're joint answer everything he got. So I might not have it, but I have access to it. So men, before we leave here tonight, I don't want us to leave here the, the just saying that we came to revival just to be coming. I don't want us to come and say, oh, I went to that church and they, they, yeah, they had a good word. They did this. I want your life to ever be changed. Because if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. When he can take you from a no, a no, a no name somebody, a no place, come on somebody, and he still can use you for his glory. When he can take you from making nothing to now making more than you ever. More than you ever can make. Go places that you never thought you could go. Do things, Sean, that you never thought you can do. But it's not me as great as he that's in me than he that is in the world. And in spite of what people may say, and in spite of how they, how they may talk, I know who my daddy is. And I know that what he's doing, and he's opening a team to open doors. So brothers, men, women, I don't want us to leave here the same way that we came this week. God has great things in store for us. And he wants you to be free. Because who the Son set free is free indeed. <laughs> Somebody just missed it. Who the Son set free. Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. When he set you free, you're free indeed. Yeah, you still going to have haters, but you tell them, I'm free. I don't know about you. you you still in bondage because you're trying to remember what I did yesterday. God has already forgave me for that, and my slate is already clean. I'm free. Woo! Say, I know. Woo! Hey, real quick. When he, when he, when he said cast, I keep hearing that uh, perfect love cast out all fears. Right? And I want you to know that perfect love is in the building tonight. Uh, and then, then I got this. I, I, you know, the, the word says in um, Proverbs 16, verse 33, that, that we, we may cast our lots. In other words, we may roll the dice, but he determines the outcome. So no matter what you roll, it, look, look at this. Look, 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 look. I don't know about I, I, I carry dice with me, right? I want, I want to show y'all something. You roll, you roll this dice. I wrote a four, right? Don't seem like much. But on the other side, there's a three. Four plus three means what? Seven. Seven. Seven represents what? Perfect. Number completion. All right? All right, watch this one. I roll it again. Oh, it's a five. All right? Don't mean like much, does it? But five's a whole lot of grace. I mean, need grace in here. Look on the other side. 
plus two. Two. Five plus two is seven. Oh, no, it ain't. <laughs> Look at this, man. Woo! A three, a four. I don't care what you roll, what you do. Come on! Your, your it's Come the on. other side that matters. Because in the end, on the other side, he works all things perfect. He works all things for yeah. the good. No matter what you tossed out there, he'll take it and he'll turn that thing around and make it perfect. Woo. Cast your lot. Cast your lots tonight. Woo. Watch him make it perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's something about the name Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some people say I'm crazy. Say when I call your name, when I call your name. Say it's just like fire. Yeah. Shut up in my bones. And the Holy Ghost is moving, y'all. And it just. Something about the name Jesus. It's something about the name. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Something about the name. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. He is the sweetest name. I it know. is the sweetest name. Say I know. demons tremble at his name. There's power in his name. Come on, how many have been in places and things just weren't looking good and all you said was Jesus? It calms your spirit and the more you said, the better you feel. <laughs> and the better that you feel, it just makes you want to say, 
I'm gonna hide behind, behind the mountain. Say I'm gonna hide behind, say hide behind the mountain. Come on, y'all, clap your hands with me. Say I'm gonna hide behind, say hide brothers and sisters in the spirit from henceforth as we go forward. Somebody say amen. amen. That's a, this is what I'm going to do. We'll do something I've not done before. We're going to just sort of dialogue, uh, but I'm going to set it up in a minute. But there's a passage of scripture. We're going to look at the Mark chapter 5. There's a passage of scripture in, in uh, Acts chapter 17. 
about verse 6 and 7. What had happened was in verse chapter 16, Paul and Silas had gone over to Philippi at the invitation of an angel to come over and help us in Macedonia. They'd gone there and messed things up and, and they threw them in prison. Y'all know the story. And said they hung there all day and said midnight, uh, one sang and one prayed and just tore the prison up. Tore the prison up. The jailer got saved. Prisoners got saved. A, a, a prison ministry was started. And then they went immediately from there down to Thessalonica and started all over again. And some hateful, bitter Jews followed them down there. Verse 4 says, and some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crime. These that have turned the world upside down now have come here too. Somebody say amen in here. Oh, it'll be good when we leave here. These men that have turned, these men have turned the world upside down. Somebody say amen. The word God, these men have turned the world. They didn't really turn it upside down. They turned it back to what it's supposed to be. The devil turned it upside down. These men have turned the world upside down. And they were just talking about the city crime. And that require a whole lot of people to turn the devil's world upside down. When we leave here, we say, well, Lord, we were just friends. And I We've never done that together like this before, but uh, let me uh, read something to you. It is in Acts chapter 5. I'm sorry, Mark chapter 5. Beginning at verse 1, I just want to just do a little refresh on it. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had had his dwelling among the tombs. And, watched, and no man could bind him, no not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when Jesus saw when when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Ooh. Terrence, and who is this man? This mad man? This demoniac? Who is he really? 
He could be anybody. He could be me, you, your son, your daughter, even your mother or your father yes, yes. and your former best friend. Who is he? I said, even, he could have been you at one time. The story closes with this man, after the encounter with Jesus, he's now sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. But who is this, this man? Anthony, what happened to him? What happened to him? It wasn't overnight. It was a process. Perhaps of a very gradual process. This is how it happened, I believe. First, he along with others he knew well that he was friends with, lived with, his associates, Embrace that which the Lord had forbidden. It began when he embraced that which the Lord had written. Hold off on the music a little bit. If you, my mind is old. It's got to focus in. He had embraced that which the Lord had forbid. Uh, he embraced the thing that the Lord had declared to be unclean. Somebody say amen in here. Amen. We try to debate what the Lord said is unclean, but you know what it is? It's whatever he said it is. But he embraced it, John, and out of that, he then built his life around it. And not only that, he ought to settle into a culture built upon it. He made his living by it, raised his family on it, accumulated wealth and power and prestige through it. Little by little, he chiseled away every bit of self-respect and propriety that he ever had. Once you embrace one unclean thing and normalize it, build your life upon it, not only do you become part of it, it becomes progressively easier to embrace every other unclean thing. And so there he is now. He is in the tombs. Come on up, turn. He's in the tombs, crying, cutting himself. And turns as we were talking, come on over, come on over. As we were talking, uh, he said, and no man could control him, contain him. No man. So, this guy was the baddest man on the block. In fact, he would have been the head of the gang. Now, now here's, here's, here's a message here. And no man could contain him. Everybody wants to be in control of something. Somebody say amen in here. If they cannot control you, Lord have mercy, cannot control themselves, they will try to do what? Control you. Terrence, you, you understand this man? He, he was, he was in, in the tombs. He broke the chains off, crying in the dark. And then it says, and no man. What do you feel about that? No man. Th this is who this guy is. No, no man. Anybody know anybody like that? You can't tell them anything. Amen. Amen. They're the baddest thing around. They'll cut you. They'll stab you. And they'll let you know. How many of they'll let you know? They'll let you know. Have you met anybody like that? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Now, now interesting thing, uh, Anthony, when we... Follow the thread of the story. When you get to the end of the story. Praise God for that. <laughs> after a simple encounter with Jesus, 
we find this same bad man sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. Not only that, watch this, watch this, watch this. Look what Jesus did, though. Jesus tells him to go home. Jesus makes this man an evangelist. I don't believe you'll hear me. I'm not talking that he didn't put him in time out or, or watch him for a year. The same day that he cast the devil out, he called him to be an act. Can you feel that? Now, that's not, that's not the way we do it. He, he didn't send him to seminary. He didn't do any of that. He said, go. In fact, he didn't even tell him what to say on that moment. Not exactly. Now, now what's the problem with that, Terrence? <laughs> the problem is, Pastor, that a lot of us, once the Lord has set us free, and he sent us back. It's easier for us to go somewhere else where don't nobody know us. Oh, say that. The man's first choice. What did the man want to do at first? For, he, he wanted to go and follow Jesus. He said, Jesus, can, we, can I just go with you? Can we go back on the other side? Can I just follow you? Now, I don't think he had any mind to go preach nothing. No, sir. When, when, you, when, here, here's, here's what man wants to do. Man wants to hit the mission field before the submission field. Uh, mm. I just heard that just right now. <laughs> Some of us are trying to go to another place when he has you at the place. Look, all he, he, he says we'll go to all of Judea, Samaria. He, he said first, start at home first. No, say it. Say it. Start at home first. Some, some people need to hear this. I know people that With the people that all, know you. Yes. I know people that travel all over, but put them in their backyard and watch them. They can pretend in other places <laughs> and wear a mask. Wear a mask, pretend to be. There are people over there don't know who they are, but right here does. Well, let, so let me, you can't be a phony in your backyard. No, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. If I'm that man, <laughs> I would rather go somewhere else. Uh, me too. Yes, sir. I don't want to go back to face all that stuff. Because everybody remember who you was and what now, you did. Now, 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 Terrence, if you ever messed up, I'm not going to. I don't know what you did. Oh, I Lord, 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 forgive me. I done messed up. The Lord, forgive I, me. I messed up and wanted to go and run. It would have been a whole, lot, e been a whole lot easier to go somewhere deep in Georgia. Yes, sir. Than to have to be here. You don't want to go down to Georgia. The devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. At least they wrote a song about Lord, it. Lord, so. yeah, Lord. Easy, easy to go somewhere, go, to go south. Or to even go north where nobody know me and I got don't have to explain anything. I want you, I want you to feel that. They said this man, the scriptures that this man had been like he was a long time. A long time. Yeah. Now here he's got to go back. The children are now grown. Oh. He ain't paid no child support. <laughs> <laughs> got grandbabies. The wife done probably moved on. <laughs> uh. And now the Lord said, I want you to go back home. And here's your message. I want you to tell them what the Lord have done for you. <laughs> He'd been gone a long time. Children grown up. Graduated from high school. And here he comes back. Want to be father of the year. He fought, I'm your daddy. <laughs> he want to be father of the year. Why don't you all go to church with me this morning? Now, now you see the difficulty of that. Now, 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 can you feel that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I myself, and, and many of you all know, uh, have, have messed up myself and then had to come back and face the church, face the people, and then for you all to say, oh, I remember when Curry did this or <laughs> Curry did that. And, and he got nerve to be preaching, and telling me something. To be preaching and telling somebody else what God can do. But here I am, Basil, I, I, I'm doing it because he, 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 he still can use me. Can, can I, can and I, nothing was wasted that I went through. It wasn't wasted. It was used for his glory. 
Yeah, hold, hold it right, hold it right there. Hold it right there. When Jesus comes uh, across the river from the sea, through the storm, comes up on the bank, immediately this madman meets him. Runs, runs to him. He runs to him. I thought his primary mission was going to just deliver that man. But it was different. He actually had an assignment. I don't believe you're hear me. He had an assignment for this man that could not do his assignment until he became unbound. And so what, what brought Jesus across the sea in the midst of the storm of wind trying to sink his boat was not so much because he could deliver him. He had an assignment for this man because the word that he put going to put in him is going to save his household. Can somebody say amen? See, don't, don't you understand that if you're facing a storm, then that means there's an assignment on the other side of the storm. I heard you say that last and night. The, and the enemy wants to stop that from ever taking place. He wants you to stay bound on that other side. But if we realize that we can find rest in the storm, you know why he was able to rest in the storm? Because Jesus knew everything outside of him had to bow to the one that lived within him. Mm, mm, mm. When you understand that, everything outside of you, even storms have to bow to the one who dwells within you. Even mm. crazier, when you, when you hear this story, and, and, and as Pastor Baltimore is saying, he, uh, you notice that the, the demoniac said something. He, he, said, he noticed who he was. Yeah. He knew who he was. Yeah. He ran to him, fell to him, and started worshiping. In fact, he said, Jesus. We just sang a song, said, that name Jesus, demons flee at that. Do you know what he just did when he said Jesus? He put the demons on notice and didn't Ooh. even realize it. Didn't Ooh. even realize it. They were getting ready to have to evacuate. He was putting them on notice. Look, 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 look what you said. I liked it. Look what he said. Look what he said. Look what he said. Look what he said. Now, now they, they <laughs> Jesus. That's what he, he put them on notice. Uh, he now, didn't what even know it. Now, what happened is, what happened is, we find out from this the end game of the demon. Yes. The demon's end game from what Jesus did when it said, they said, you coming early basically to torment us, <laughs> take us to the abyss, uh, let us go into the swine. Yeah. Now, they go in these 3,000 pigs, mm -hmm. and the pigs run over the cliff and kill themselves. Now what, now what, now what, what, what? They didn't kill the demons. Uh -uh. Demons don't die like that. Somebody say amen. And so what happens is Jesus revealed what his end game was. His end game was to get the man so broke up that he would take his own life. Yeah. And that's, that's the way the, the enemy want to do us. He that's wanna, the end game. Yeah. The end game. He wants to kill ourselves with what we're going through. He wants to give up, throw in the towel, and just Man. and just and just say we're done for. Look, look. Anybody watch football? Yeah. Watch football. Many years ago, Super Bowl. You may recall this. It was the, uh, I believe, the um, Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, don't talk about that game. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Some of y'all, man, you, we were, did, you we need to hear to, this. We were supposed to win that game. Where's Atlanta? Where's Atlanta? Atlanta's that Georgia. Georgia. That's Georgia. <laughs> we were supposed to win that game. I know, but the devil went down to Georgia, so he lost. <laughs> <laughs> we had that game won for the last couple if you minutes. If you watched it like I did, halftime, you were like, man, the, the, the halftime show is probably going to be better than this game because Atlanta was running all over them. Yeah. yeah. Right? Third quarter, you probably like, man, I could go, I could go on to bed. Because the deficit is so bad, there's no way possible they're ever going to come back. Sort of, sort of you threw in the towel, mm -hmm. right? There ain't no way they'll come back. But something happened in the fourth quarter. Somebody in here is in their fourth quarter. Somebody's you think in the it's fourth too quarter. late? You think it's too much of a deficit? You don't think it's possible to come back? But can I tell you, that it went into overtime. Let me tell you, this is your fourth quarter, and God is working overtime for you. Woo! Huh? Good God Almighty. The worst thing in this life that we can lose is not 
uh, others and money. The worst thing you can lose is time because when it's over, it's over. Mm. But in that game, they still had time. And they could call a timeout. And let me tell you what a timeout does. <laughs> what, what, what does it do? It what can does... stop the momentum of the other team. <laughs> Woo! Huh? It can make you get refocused and get things back together. Look, I heard this the other night. Uh, come from Pastor Baltimore. He said, one thing I regret in this thing is not doing more coming together with uh, Jimmy over at Bacon's Castle. Time out. The time's not over yet. And the enemy may think he's got the upper hand. Time out. And let's call this thing back together. Let's call this thing back together. This is what we're talking about. Man up. Look, time out. Let's assess this thing. Let's get back in this thing together. Not one individual because you can't win the game with one. It's going to take everybody coming together to win it. Right? I don't care our differences or where we've been, what we've done. At the end of the day, them boys are going to come together to play because the goal is to win. And so they come together. They rally in the fourth quarter. There's a comeback. Can I tell you, a setback ain't nothing but a setup for a comeback. Huh? Some of you say rock bottom. Rock bottom's not where you go to fail. It's where you go to lay your new foundation. And then you don't build it upon you because you is sinking sand. But you build it upon him. And you build it upon him. And you keep building up on him, man. And you keep building up on him. And it's solid rock, man. Right? And so in overtime, overtime. Mm, they win this thing. Everybody else called it, went to bed, all this stuff. Next day, people were saying, what in the world took place? Somebody has counted you out, but when they wake up tomorrow, they go see what in the world my took God, place. My man. God, my God, huh? my huh? God. He ain't out of this thing. He came back. Mm. He came back, man. Woo. He came back. See, they done called you out. They done said it's over with. There's not no hope. Close the door. Shut the lights off. Let's call it quits. He's done. He's done. And tomorrow they're going to wake up and they're going to look and they're going to say, there he is. There he is. And he had all that stuff too. 6,826 mm. demons. After, after when, when yeah. Jesus... Uh, you said when Jesus comes up there, bow down, they're bowed down before him. He said, what's your name? He called overtime, didn't he? He called overtime. He called overtime. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, we're, so, we're, so we're in the overtime. Overtime is grace time, isn't it? Yeah. And, we, and here's the thing. Y'all, y'all, y'all say you watch the games and stuff. Y'all watch overtime, but you're the first ones to leave church. Wow. Through overtime. We don't do overtime. And that game, and that game done what for you? That football laid down what for you? <laughs> and you get more excited about a ball game than you do church. Something's wrong. Oh, watch man. out, sir. Huh? Watch out. Jesus. Watch out. Jesus. Watch out That's what excites me. I could care less about a game. I could care less because there is nothing without him. Mm. Huh? But we do. We watch that. Man, we'll go to the game four hours. Some of you, one hour in, is ready to, uh, and don't let the air conditioner go out. As soon as they got here. As soon as they got here. But you'll sit out there at that game, uh, <laughs> for nothing. You didn't win. They, they done nothing for you. But he done everything for you. Amen. Why are we in a hurry? He won't in a hurry. He stood there through all 6,826 of those things. And he didn't leave until it was finished. Can I tell you, he ain't going to leave you till it's finished. She's finished, man. Everything, all of it, wiped out, gone. There's power in the name. Do you understand that? And when you're in the name, there's even more power because it's not just power in the name of Jesus. It's like getting married. When, I'm, when me and my wife were dating, Rachel could not go to the bank and withdraw out of Anthony Robinson's account. She could have asked, and they, they would have said, who are you, Rachel Bridges? Well, who? You have no right to this. But when we got married, there's a name change. Mm. Now she's Rachel Robinette. Now she has access to everything in the account. Oh, Say it, I may not Say like it. that, but she does. <laughs> she does. Let me tell you, some of you just been in the dating thing too long. It's time to get married. Huh. It's, time to, it's time to put a ring on that thing, man. Huh? And make a commitment and say, now I'm in the name. 
That's why you ain't been able to withdraw anything. My God. You're just dating him. And you oh, ain't Lord. even, and then tell me this, and I'm going to tell y'all some of this. You can't be married to him and be the girlfriend of the devil. Woo. Can't be the bride of Christ and the Woo. girlfriend to the devil. Mm. Mm. You better pick one. Huh? Man, mm. I'm going to stop, y'all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, now, this man, this man, this man that was, was living in the graveyard. Naked, uh, crying at night. The baddest thing in the in the, in the cemetery. Pastor, can I say of, before you go, he was the baddest thing in the cemetery. The scripture says he took the chains off. Yeah, he freed himself. He could have got up and left. But he stayed there. Because he's the baddest thing there. Look, 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 look. look. look if, you, if you read this story, Matthew says there were two. Yeah. In fairness to the text, it never says it's just one. Mm -mm. Could have been many. So it points out to me that he was clearly the baddest, the baddest thing yeah. in the cemetery. In the cemetery. Yeah. And so he focuses on this one. A lot of times people will not leave because it means giving up the empowerment mm. that you got from being demon possessed. And, say and, and, say and, and Jesus was just getting practice of raising people from tombs. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tomb, we already know he's a tomb raiser. He raised it, there's, and sometimes we entomb ourselves and we put ourselves inside this thing. You know, this, this past year, um, at Easter time, I, it, was, it was the craziest time because I, I remember sitting there and I seen Jesus being whipped. And I always wondered, why did they whip him so much? And they said it was more than anybody ever had been whipped. And I was like, why? And beyond recognition, and it just it baffled me. And I always thought of it as this gory thing. And then God started to show me something. And I see Jesus being whipped. And every time he was whipped, the whip was hitting me. And when it hit his side, it was restoring my side. Mm. It hit his chin, my chin, every, mm. everywhere it hit. And he had to lose his identity so mine could be fully restored. So he took a blow everywhere he had to so that my blows no longer had to exist. Mm. It became glory instead of gory now. I started to cry. I remember I was like sitting in that room and I was just crying. Thank you. What a beautiful picture of restoration that every beat was necessary to complete every part of me. All mm. 6,826 places. Good God of mine. Huh? Mm. You don't realize that? And Jesus came out of the tomb. Do we agree that the body of Christ is no longer in the tomb? That's right. Amen. That's right. Then That's let right. me ask you a question. Why are we putting the body of Christ back in it? Mm. Huh? Why do we put ourselves back in there? Because when he rose, we rose. Why do we not walk in the resurrection power? Say Come it. on, man. Say it, sir. Why do we not as men? Walk in the authority, the power, the power. Look, I don't have to speak to that thing. I got the authority to stomp that thing. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Huh? Mm. I ain't even got to mention his name. In fact, I would encourage you not to mention his name. Because every time you do, it puffs him up. He wants to feel like he's somebody. And the more you mention his name, it makes him feel like as if he is somebody. Why not let him wallow in his insecurity? His name ain't even worthy to be mentioned. You want to speak a name? Speak the name Jesus. <laughs> huh? And watch tombs open up. Watch demons flee. Watch lives become transformed. And once a life is transformed, I can tell you it'll never be the same again. And it transforms lives so that that life can now transform lives. Because a transformed Amen. life does just that. It transforms lives. The, uh, it's interesting in this story couple of things interesting. Number one, swine was a symbol of being unclean. Unclean meant forbidden. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
we could associate it with sin at that time. Jesus was teaching a principle. God was teaching a principle what he says is sin is sin. What he says is unclean is unclean. And, and sometimes, Terrence and Anthony, if not all the time, when you're really entrenched in a thing, and that thing has become your way of life, your source of prestige and prominence. He has to destroy that thing. His pork business went out of business. Mm. Somebody say amen in here. It, it, when he's trying to deliver one who's a crack dealer to keep him from going back he has to put him out of business. Out of business. Yeah. A anybody believe that's the truth? He got, he got, he's got to put him out of business. Lord, if one is a womanizer to keep him from going back, he sometimes has to put his business out of business. Now, I hope you're old enough to understand what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime he had to put We're his not ready business for that yet, out of business. I remember, I remember my father. Some when I was young, we were talking about another relative, and they were saying, "Well, you know, my brother doesn't run around as much as he used to. He comes home <laughs> he, all the time now." And my father, maybe that's where I got it from. He says, "Well, how old is he now?" And I wonder what that had to do with anything. I was, I was ready to celebrate with the girl about her brother. And he said, he coming home because he can't do nothing else. And so, so sometimes. He shut down the business, man. Oh, go on. Uh, now, 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 if, now, if it wasn't nothing but men in here, they'd be sweating by now. I'll tell you that right now. They'd, they'd be sweating right now. Some years ago, a man that had a problem, he said he had a sex demon. And I don't know what led him oh, man. to seek counseling from Mother Baltimore. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> that business was getting shut down. <laughs> See, he said, he said, Mother, uh, can I talk with you like this? She said, yes, go ahead. He was a preacher, too, by the way. Not him. Oh, yeah. He was a preacher, too. But why you look at me and say that? <laughs> I didn't know you then, so it could have been you. I didn't know you then. But, 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 it but, might have been. When was but, it? But, but, <laughs> but she said, but she said, he said, well, can you pray for me? And I knew that was a mistake. <laughs> you, you really want me to pray for him? Yeah. And she started praying. Lord, remove his ability <laughs> to do the thing. She just disabled him. And he said, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Stop. Stop. <laughs> now, you got to know my wife. Once she start, oh, ain't no stopping stop that. The brother <laughs> left and went all the way down to Florida somewhere. I don't know. I don't he know. Probably, he probably they, went to Georgia. Down there the he devil. missed Georgia. Because the devil's been disabled too. Mom, not going with I, I don't know whether he got his nature back or what, but all I know is he didn't come near the house. I couldn't call him, couldn't talk with him. So, so sometimes people want you to pray for them. They want you to pray that you're going to have peace while still doing wrong. Come on. Mm. Say that again. Come on. Sometimes they, they want you to pray to give me peace while I'm doing wrong, to prosper me while I'm fooling with Francis, mm. but married to Linda. Mm. That's what I'm answer saying. Answer my prayers. The bride and the girlfriend. Remember say it, say what it, I say said. It. Amen, you, amen, can't amen. Be, you can't be both. Amen. You can't be the bride of Christ and the girlfriend to the devil. You can't. No. And why would you want to if you truly knew the bride the way? Huh? Or you knew the bridegroom. Here's, here's the bigger picture. Friday, uh, Wednesday night I said this. I remember going through one of the toughest times in my life. My daughter was in a bad accident, and 
and it was like her stomach exploded on compact, almost like a bag getting blown up and hit on a four-wheeler with her grandfather. Hit a, a pipe going across the dirt road. He never saw it. it, was going wide open. She saw it. It caught her right here. She was pretty much paralyzed on the ground. They called me. I was supposed to be speaking in a church that night. It was on a Sunday. And, of course, I get the call, Bobby wrecked a four-wheeler. I'm thinking she just turned it over, no big deal. I get out there, and nobody's at the house, and I'm thinking this is a joke. They're just playing some kind of joke. Well, then um, I see my uh, father-in-law riding his truck up toward the house through the field, and um, he said, ambulance is on the way. Well, then I hear the ambulance, and I run. I mean, I, I probably could have outran the, the truck that day. And I get back there, and I come around the curve, and there I saw my daughter laying on the ground. I saw the pipe bent in the shape, which should have never been bent. And I get up to her, and, and uh, I, when I get to her, I said, Bobby, it's Daddy. Everything's going to be okay. The ambulance shows up. They didn't have enough people. They asked me, could I drive the ambulance? I still don't know why I got the bill for that thing when I drove it, <laughs> um, but, but I did. To the, to the nightingale, because the nightingale was going to be in the field, and they could prep her while I drove, and we could airlift her. Um, but let me tell you something. When, when I showed up there, she was in pain, but when she saw the father, she was no longer focused on the pain, but she mm. was focused on me. Good God. It didn't it. mean the pain was gone. It just mean in that presence, in that moment, and, and I said, it's going to be okay, and she trusted every word the father said. Well, now I needed to know it was going to be okay because after she was airlifted, and then I'm riding to the hospital. And, and, and God, this is what God spoke to me on, on the way. If this don't turn out the way you want it to, will you still love me? And I, and I was like, shut up. I told him the only time I ever said shut up to God. I said, shut up. I don't want to hear that. And again, he said, Anthony, if this don't go the way you want it, will you still love me? And I mm. said, Yes. I said, yes, we get there to the, to the hospital. We're, we're in the uh, foyer. The nurses are coming up, and they say it's going to take a little while. we got to sort of do some things. Within five minutes, they were back. This is bad. It's not good, and we need to do surgery, and we need to do it right now. My wife's looking at me. I'm looking at her, and she said, is, is everything going to be okay? And I was like, yeah. And deep inside, I was like, is it, God? Is it? Well, let me tell you, my, my daughter was in the hospital there for over a month. My wife lived there. One night, my wife, I think she was frustrated with God and everything that happened. We, we were talking to each other on the phone. I was at home with my son. She's there with my daughter. And, and she said, I don't want to be with you anymore. Look, when I had all 6,826, she was with me. And now, now I had God, and she was abandoning me. She was mad. She was upset. And I took shots at her, y'all. I said, why? I, I said, why am I the only one that's changed anyway in this relationship? I said, maybe you ain't the mom you think you are. I was mad because she shot at me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to sleep good tonight. You're the one that's not. I hung up the phone. I couldn't sleep. I'm laying on the couch. And I said, God, I feel like I'm giving you everything, but I feel like I'm losing it all. I didn't understand, man. I didn't really understand. that. That's what. It, look, it, it, it takes giving everything. It takes losing it all to gain it all. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. I remember the next day somebody asked me um, about going to a, a church in Williamsburg. I said, I don't even want to go. I want to I want abandon in God. I just don't want to be around people tell me how good this is. And I was just like, I just want to wallow in this, right? And my buddy, about an hour later, he said, Anthony, I need you to go, man. I think God's got something for you. So I was like, all right, pick me up at 5, man. We'll stop, get something to eat, and we'll go. Let me tell you what happened. I get to this church, and at that time, I didn't even have a job. I'm standing in line to go into the church because it was a line. I, I wish, man, we'd see that. Yeah. Do you know there was a line at the ABC store when COVID hit? And the church got so mad at the ABC store being open, and the church couldn't be open. And I was like, the church is hypocrites. Look, y'all weren't there when the church was open. What are you complaining about? <laughs> and the ABC store, let me tell you why it's open. Because it's a necessity. Because the alcohol has become everything to that person that needs it. And when they wake up, that's what they think about. Throughout the day, that's all they think about. When they go to sleep, that's all they think about. If we ever got about like that, like that with Jesus, they wouldn't have to tell us that we're not obsessed. They would see that we are and wouldn't shut it down because they knew something would die if they did. We're the hypocrites. The church is. 
and then we're setting up tables in the church, right, when this is where they should be flipped, and we should be setting them up at the ABC store. And let me tell you something about an alcoholic. You can tell he's an alcoholic. Because he walks different. Boy, when you get close enough, you can tell because he smells different. Huh? And if you listen to him, he talks different, man. Huh? When we get like that, somebody needs to know by the way you walk. Huh? By the way you talk. By the aroma coming off of you. Huh? Don't tell me what's a necessity. And so I'm there, man. I'm at the church. I'm at the church, man. I'm getting, you know, standing in line. Praise God. Guy comes up. Hey, they don't allow no Smithfield people here. And this guy all of a sudden he said, "Hey, man, you need a job." I was like, "Well, yeah, I do. I got a job in line to just go. Just showed up. That's all I did. Even when I won't feeling like it. Do you know sometimes you just show up? Then I go in and they're worshiping, and the worship leader's like." How deep do you want to go tonight? All I could think about is what's deep. I remember jumping in a pool. The deeper I go, my ears would pop. You ever done that? I said, God, I want to go so deep tonight that my ears pop. I want to hear you like I've never heard you. And as I'm there worshiping, my eyes are closed. I open my eyes. And in the corner of this church, I saw a bride. I saw the dress and the veil. But I didn't see anything, no face behind the veil. And I'm staring. And the longer I stared, all of a sudden I began to see my face behind the veil. And God said, when you become the bride that I long for and desire to be with, Rachel will become the bride that you long for and desire to be with. You'll never understand what it is to be a husband until you know what it is to be a bride. And she said it's over, but I'm the one that says it's over. Now he said, now go get your family. Understand, a woman is sensitive, nurture. You need to understand and get these traits yourself as a man and be sensitive and nurturing to where she's at. Friday, I get up, I call her, I said, love you. She didn't say it back, I deserved that. But she said, they're getting ready to operate on Bobby. She's got an infection or something going on, and I said, okay, I'll be there, and I, I headed there. I get in the elevator going up, and as I'm going up, I said, you know what, devil? I said, you go get you another family, this one's mine. I'm not going to have nobody taking my son fishing. I'm not going to have no other man taking my, walking my daughter down the aisle. I'm not going to have no other man taking my wife to dinner. Go get you another family. This one's mine. And I spoke that that day, and I've held on to it ever since. I'm not saying things have been easy, but I'm saying they've been worth fighting for every bit of it. Huh? And I get there, and I told her, I said, look, we're going to be okay. And she says, we are. And let me tell you, man, I, I, I look right at her, and I said, I love you. And she looked at me, and she said, I love you too. Come on, man. You may have messed up yesterday. You may be in here and something happened uh, uh, to the guys in here, to the guys right now in here. You may have done something to your wife. You know, a, a while back it was my anniversary, and, and I asked her. It fell during the week. And I was like, you want to wait till like, the weekend to go do something? And she was like, sure. When she says that, don't listen to that. <laughs> it's a setup. That's a setup, man. And so Wednesday night, setup. and we didn't go nowhere. And so she goes to bed early. And I'm like, what in the world's wrong? So I go in there. I said, you okay? Yeah. That means no. And I'm, I'm like, what? Well, I asked you if you, you wanted to do something or wait. You said, wait. I mean, come on, 30 years. You think, you know, we'd, by now, I'd. I'm still learning, man. <laughs> and, and she's like, I just thought you would take some kind of initiative to do. And I'm like, man. <laughs> So I'm like, I can't win. So Thursday, the next day, I go to work, and I'm asking God, this is what I'm saying, y'all. I said, God, how can I fix yesterday? He said, yeah, you can't. <laughs> However, you can make today pretty awesome. Let me tell you what I did. I called Smithville Station, made reservations. I had flowers delivered there, set up, ordered her favorite meal from the menu, got home, told her, get ready, we're going somewhere. Took her to the Smithville Station. We had dinner, loved on her, gave her a gift. Man, let me tell you, Friday morning, she texted me at work. She said, thank you for last night making me feel special. I said, that's because you are special. Look, we can get it wrong don't mean we can't make it right. Man. right. Yesterday's gone. Today's a brand new day. Brand new day. A new opportunity for us. This, like I said, this may be your fourth quarter. And you may say, but I've, I've messed up and it's too far gone. Let me tell you, it's not too far gone. Did, did you hear last night? 
the weeping willow tree, you're not out of the reach of the arm of God. It's not too far gone for him to turn this thing back around. I don't care what the dice says on that side. Look at the other side. The other and, it's, side. and it's perfect. It's complete. Don't look at where you're at. Look at where he's going to take you and how he'll work that thing perfectly and good for all those who love him. It doesn't say he may work. He said he will work all things for the good. Mm. So I don't care what you rolled. A two, it don't seem like much. But when you flip it over, five you realize all that grace on the other side. <laughs> that five. All that grace on the other side is going to make that thing worth every bit of it, man. Because he wastes nothing. Understand this. Not even broken stuff. Broken in the wrong hands, they'll throw it in the trash can. The world says there's no value there. Throw it away. Broken in the right hand sees value. Let me explain to you. A friend of mine, James, was moving the china cabinet. Didn't have the top part bolted. The top part fell over. Now his wife, Noelle's china from her grandmother just all got broken. I happened to walk in the house at the time that all this happened. They're in there. He's crying. She's crying. They're picking the stuff up, throwing it in the bag. I said, what's going on? They tell me. I said, don't throw it away. She's looking at me like I'm weird. I said, I can make a mosaic tabletop out of that. Take them broken pieces, put it on, and make you a table for your deck. All of a sudden, she's like, what? Brokenness in the right hands can still find beauty. Watch out, boy. Watch out, sir. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Well, Linda, I guess, I guess I'll make a reservation down at Smithfield Station. I should have had something ready when you came back from Trinidad with the kids, but... Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Amen. Oh, trip. I just thank God for mics. I'm in awe, man. I don't want to, it's like he said, I don't even know how to end, I don't know how to end this. I don't want it to end. Bless you, sir. I don't want it to stop. I don't want to go tomorrow and be black and, and white. And, but I want to go tomorrow and it's the kingdom. And yes, Amen. I see black. Come on, when we say we don't see color, we're lying. Amen. But we don't focus on that. That's right. That's what it's saying. For me to say I don't see a black man, I'd be lying to you. I see him. But I don't call him a black brother. I call him a brother. That's right. Because my focus ain't on the black part. It's on the brother part. Huh? Are we going to go back? Is, is this ends? Are we going to go back to the same old stuff? Church as usual, mm. and it's cool. Mm. You know, we had that. We had the tattooed guy at our church for a bit, and we did. Yeah. We did our part. Yeah. Are we going to pursue kingdom every single day of our life? Huh? Are we going to really come together? That's what it's going to take. Mm. Putting our selfishness to the side. Can I tell you? Reconciliation mm. has to come from the one who's been offended. Mm. When are we going to end this thing? It stops when we choose for it to stop. Huh? There's no unity without you and I. In fact, you and I is what starts the whole thing off. What's it going to take, man? Huh? To come together to put it. Well, they don't pray like we pray. They don't dress like we dress. They, they, who cares? It's about Jesus. Yes, yes. It's always going to be about Jesus. And it never stopped being about Jesus. Huh? 
when are we going to put our stuff to the side so that we can encounter his stuff? Mm. Huh? Sure, the chains are broken. I see them laying there. I hear y'all singing the songs all the time, but you're still sitting there just as bound as you've ever been bound. Mm. Mm. Just like the demoniac. I'll call it the maniac. Mm. It's a maniac. It's, it's crazy to think that he didn't open the door to. It's like going into a prison cell and taking the cuffs off. I was there. When they would move me from cell to cell, they'd put me in, they'd take the cuffs off. But I'm still bound until they open the door. That's right. mm. But when they open the door, I have to come out. He's opened the door. And he wants you to come out. And he wants you to stop mm. existing and he wants you to start living. Huh? And man, I know you don't understand how to love your wife properly. But if you get taught by a bridegroom, you would learn. That day I pulled in the parking lot, I didn't just meet my dad, who was teaching me how to be a father now to my kids. Because I missed 13 years of their life doing me. He's teaching me how to be a friend because he's a friend. He's teaching me how to be a husband because he's a bridegroom. Mm -hmm. In fact, I went and got me a shirt that said, number two dad. Teach and everybody's son. like, what's that about? Nowadays, you got to be careful wearing that because they think you're... But I said, because there's only one worthy to be called number one, and that's him. I'll take where I fit in. I'm number two. Uh -huh. Come on, guys. It's time to be number Teach two dads. Us, Lord. Teach us, Lord. Uh -huh. It's time Teach to raise us. up as men. Teach not us, play Lord. this thing, not pretend, but seize the opportunity. Take advantage of it. Teach us, recognize what's in front of you. Even the demoniac recognized what was in front of him. Jesus. You've messed up, but let me tell you, he's right there with you. And if you would just reach out and, and, and speak that name, Jesus, you realize you can stop running because he's running right to you. Mm. Mm. And there's nothing too much that he can't fix. Mm. It's not too far gone. There's still time in this thing, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm declaring tonight mm. a timeout. Mm. A timeout over Surrey County. A timeout over Isle of Wight County. A timeout over Hampton Roads. A timeout over Virginia. A timeout over the, the, the United States of America. A timeout. Enemy, you may have the momentum right now, but we're getting ready to turn this thing back around on you. Let me tell you right now. David didn't even mention his name. He said, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, who is this one who has no blood covenant with my God? Who yeah. is this thing that yeah. has no blood covenant with my God? Who is this? I come to you in the name of the Lord and he will deliver you to me. This is my property. Yes. This is my property. He created this for me. Mm. Not for you. And we're taking it back. We declare tonight, time out. Amen. And when they see the news tomorrow, guess what? <laughs> we win. Amen. We win. Huh? What would that be like? Amen. Let me, let me, let me say this. We're going to, I want to close with this sad story. I want you to listen to this. When the Lord set us free, we must look for our validation to come from him and not to people around us. This thing, church hurts, the craziest thing I've ever said, heard. Your validation does not come from them. It comes from the one who set you free. Read this sad story. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fleed and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devil was departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also watched, saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devil was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear 
And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now, the man out of whom the devil was departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to that own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. I'm going to put you on the spot. Close us. Give us some insight on that. The thing that gets me, after all that Jesus had done, They not only don't embrace the man, they were afraid. They didn't even want Jesus. So with that being said, before we leave here tonight, the work that the Lord has done in your life, don't allow no one, the naysayers, them that know your story hinder you from doing what God has instructed you to do. Say that, amen. He said, go. And Jesus is speaking tonight to somebody in this room. And he's saying, go. Go back to where you once were and show them how I delivered you. Show them how I set you free. Show them the ones that talked about you the one that laughed at you, the one that said you'll never mount to anything, the ones that said you'll never prosper, show them what I've done. Don't be mad at them. Love on them and show them the goodness of me. That's all that God requires of us tonight. I could be angry with many because some of the stuff I inflicted upon myself mm. and some stuff we inflict upon ourselves. But Anthony, all I do is show them love. Because I know what I was, I'm not anymore. Who I was, I'm not anymore. Yeah, you may remember the story, but you can't tell it like I can tell it because I'm the one that did it. So I come to, I, I admonish you on tonight, men, women, those that are viewing my Facebook live, who the sun set free is free indeed. Don't you found yourself back into that cemetery that the Lord has brought you out of. Mm. Once he has freed you from that place, go dancing, go running, go singing, go, go shouting that one nobody but God that did it for me and brought me out. So I encourage you tonight, don't go back. Amen. There will always be those in the world after seeing a miracle something you're excited about in your life. They don't suddenly turn to love you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nor do what they, he did in your life move them to want Jesus. Mm. This man is no longer demoniac. He's free. There's no celebration in the community waiting for him. Not only that, I would have thought they would say, Jesus, tell us some more, stay here. Even when you see God working through the lives of people around you, it won't necessarily result in more Jesus desiring in your church. Can somebody say amen here? They bid Jesus to leave. They would rather be having others in bondage than to have Jesus set them free. Before, before we end, I know he, he didn't ask for this either. But I want to thank Pastor Baltimore for stepping out. Um, saw this weird-looking dude and looked beyond the weirdness. And I was like, what could we do if we just look beyond the exterior of each other and we get to know the interior? And I think we formed something that I know that's not going to end tonight. But I want to thank him personally for being a man of God, for all the years he's sown in, for all the many more years he's going to continue to sow in. 
that God would continue to give him favor and strength and provision, that Nebo would be a place that would be like a, a lighthouse on Route 10 in Surrey, Virginia, that people would be drawn here, that there'd be a smell. Look, earlier with the fire, we were talking about that fire. And, and uh, look, when, when, when Canada was on fire not too long ago, there was evidence because of the smoke. Mm -hmm. Father, I let there, let there be evidence because of the smoke billowing out of this place. Yes. That there's a fire here. And let that draw people to the fire that's here, Lord. Father, I thank you for his heart. But, Father, I thank you for his life. Yes. And his love for you, Lord. Yes. Father, I am blessed today. I'm a better man today. Mm. By simply just knowing this man right here. I'm asking all the guys tonight, man. Can all the guys come up here? If you're a guy, you, you come, come stand up. Come up here. But this ain't going to stop tonight. We've been talking about even doing some things to help people in the communities, different places. We got some things in the works behind the scenes. God is doing some things, man. Uh, uh, women, look up here at these men. These are, these are your husbands, your, the sons. What, uh, but... I, I'm declaring tonight something over the men that are here right now, that have been here over the last couple of days, that, that these are men, you're looking right now, these are men that are going to man up. They're going to step up and say yes to God. Look, without having to look into their account, because every time we look in our account, we'll never see enough. But you look in his, it's always enough. And anything you have to check with before saying yes to God is an idol. We won't look to anything else before we say yes to God. We'll say yes and trust him on that journey. This is the men right here that are going to make a difference in Surrey County, in Isle of Wight County, in Hampton Roads. You're looking at it. And enemy, if you see this, you're on notice. <laughs> We're going to speak it right now. Jesus, we're putting you on notice, and every demon will have to flee and get out of the way of what these men are going to do. Father, I thank you for these men. I thank you. They could be anywhere. It's Friday night. They could be at the club, but they're choosing to be at the church. And for that, Lord, I say thank you. And I know that you're saying thank you because they're here. And they're here because you started something, God. And I know you will keep doing it until it is finished. And these are men unlike any other men. These are men that are saying yes to you. And we're going to go out here and we're going to be better husbands. We're going to be better fathers. We're going to be better friends. We're going to be better men of God. And we declare it tonight. And it starts tonight. So when this timeout's over, enemy, <laughs> it's over for you. We're taking this thing back. We're taking our families back. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Baltimore. Thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies, for putting up with us Thank men. You, God bless you. All 6,826 of our things, you still stood there and put up with us. When the, some you, of the people Jesus. in the church said, leave him, he'll never change, you stood in there. Thank I'm you, thankful Jesus. for you standing. Keep standing for your men. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for the women. For the women. Because we need them in our lives. And they're not less than, they're equal. They're our helpers. You put us together. Look, you didn't put women here to do what we can do. You put them here to do what we can't do. And there's a lot we can't do, and we need them to help us through this thing. Thank you, Jesus, for our brides, our, our, our mothers, our sisters. Thank you for the women in our life, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 What a glorious three days. We're excited. And now we're going to go over to the other side and break some bread together and continue our fellowship. And if the Lord has placed upon your heart to contribute uh, a love offering to the ministry, we're basking them back, but you're certainly not obligated. God bless you. God bless you. Can we pray over the food God, before minutes. we go in the back? God, we thank you for this food. Thank you for the hands that have prepared it. God, we thank you for this fellowship, for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
you can go right through. You can go right through. You can go right through.